Jada Pinkett Smith, The Devaluation of Will Smith, Part 5. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for continuing to embrace this excellent material, which enables you to understand so much more about Jada Pinkett Smith's behaviour, the entanglement that Will Smith finds himself in, an entanglement not of the Jada Pinkett Smith definition, but that of the narcissistic ensnarement, and, of course, to enable you to understand more about narcissism. This is the season for understanding about narcissism, and you're here for it. Therefore, without any further ado, let's get back to the material and watch what happens next. Love. Because I wasn't sure I was ever going to speak to you again. I know, I know. Yeah, like, the fact that I'm speaking to you again is a, <laughs> is a miracle. Um, <laughs> I would agree. I would agree. No, but it ain't for the weak at heart. There's just certain things that you have to go through, and it's like... And I wish, you know... I wish that wasn't the case. <laughs> I do. I Absolutely, wish that yeah, sure. wasn't the hey, case. I sure wish it could be all magic and miracles. Yeah. You got to go through some to get the answers. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm just happy because I definitely believe that you and I, we never, ever, ever thought that we would make yeah, it back. That, yeah, there's a real power in the just knowing somebody's riding with you no matter what. Yeah. And you really can't know that until you go through, until some you through some stuff, you know. The original footage pauses at 10 minutes and 48 seconds. Will Smith states, I wasn't sure I was ever going to speak to you again. Jada Pinkett Smith replies, I know, I know. Will Smith states, yeah, the fact that I'm speaking to you again is a miracle. And he laughs. She responds, I would agree. I would agree. Will Smith states, No, but it ain't for the weak of heart. There's just certain things that you have to go through. It's like... Jada Pinkett Smith then interrupts him. And I wish, I wish that wasn't the case. I do. When he states I wasn't sure I was ever going to speak to you again, that's a potential threat to control. But of course, she knows that he did speak to her again, and therefore that threat evaporated. Her response of, I know, I know, isn't one that's done with emotional empathy to show that she understands, but it's condescending. The fact that she laughs about the comment is derision. It's not because she finds it genuinely funny, or that is genuinely funny. It's quite simply she's deriding him as a consequence of him saying, you're, I'm speaking to you again is a miracle, whereas she's actually thinking, you're speaking to me again because I'm so special. She can state that she agrees with what he's saying because in that moment, Will Smith is under control and therefore she can almost bless him with agreement. When Will Smith states, no, but it ain't for the weak of heart, there's just certain things that you have to go through. Actually, Will, you don't. But you have been brainwashed by her manipulations and your own emotional thinking to believe that you have to go through this tortuous process in order to find yourself in order to somehow deal with the relationship. It should not be like that at all in a normal and healthy relationship, as I've explained in an earlier part of this series. The fact is, your wife has continued to tell you that it's almost no pain, no gain, that you have to forge it in fire, that you have to go through all of this pain in order to reach a deeper level of understanding. No, quite simply, her narcissism is justifying her abuse of you, and as a consequence of the way that her manipulations have impacted upon you and your own emotional thinking that doesn't let you see clearly, you've swallowed it whole. When she states, and I wish, I wish that it, the case I do, she of course interrupts him, showing a sense of entitlement and poor boundary recognition. There's more of the hand-waving going on, and she exhibits false compassion. Will Smith responds, I sure wish it could be magic and miracles. Notice at this point when Will Smith states this, you can see the warmth and affection in his eyes and face, a complete contrast to the cold countenance that she regularly exhibits. Jada Pinkett Smith responds with, You've got to go through some shit to get the answers, you know, and I'm just happy because I definitely believe that you and I, we never, ever, ever thought we'd make it back. That's just plain deluded and is an assertion of control. 
It's making it sound like there's something monumental that has occurred, or maybe monumentous. And in the circumstances, it's just more nonsense that's being spouted by her. Will Smith responds, yeah, there's a real power in just knowing someone's riding with you no matter what. Except they're not, Will. They're abusing you, but you can't see it. Jada Pinkett Smith agrees. She says yes. And then Will Smith says, and you can't really know that, and she interrupts him again, until you go through it. She agrees with him, of course, because he's showing once again that he's under control. That the earlier parts of this Red Table talk, where he was asking her about her behaviour, it's basically moved on. That's been forgotten about. And instead, this is all about the fact that it's worth the torture of the relationship to get to this point, to move forward. And therefore, because he's swallowed the propaganda that she puts forward, she's able to agree with him. There's no threat to control. He's demonstrating that he's under control with what he's saying. Uh, I don't want to go through this no more. Yeah, no, I don't yeah. either. Yeah. I'm going to get you back first, and then... You're going to get me back. I think you've got me back. <laughs> I think you <laughs> I think we're good on that, okay? <laughs> okay, that might, that's probably true. That's you know, true. but... Um, and I don't think it's about getting anybody back. No, for me it is. Okay. Um, I'll give you that petty... <laughs> that's what you want. <laughs> uh, um, but, you know, I will definitely say... Mm -hmm. It's just part of it. Yeah. You know, if you expect to be with somebody for a lifetime. 25 years and counting. Mm. We ride together. We, we die, die together. together. Bad, Bad marriage, marriage for, for life. life. <laughs> 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 That's terrible. It's the truth. It's the truth. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, oh, uh, it's just part of the journey. Halting the original footage at 11 minutes and 50 seconds, the segment opens with Will Smith stating, I don't want to go through this no more. Understandable sentiments from him. Jada Pinkett Smith, me neither. She mirrors him. Will Smith states, I'm going to get you back first. Immediately, she gives it the old side eye, which shows her contempt, and as if to say, yeah, as if you will. And then she states, you're going to get me back. I think you've, I think we're good on that. Blame shifting and basically suggesting that he's the one that's caused the problem. She then laughs. Jada Pinkett Smith then continues by stating, you know, and I don't think it's about getting anybody back. This shows the compartmentalization and the almost immediate contradiction between what she said earlier about getting people back, and now saying, actually, it's not about getting anybody back. And she's nullifying the threat to control posed by any suggestion that he might do this. Will continues by saying, no, for me, it is. Jada Pinkett Smith responds to that by stating, OK, I'll give you that, Teddy, if that's what you want. I think that's what she's saying. But I'll definitely say, just part of it, you know but I'll definitely say it's just part of it, you know, if you expect to be with somebody for a lifetime. Here, she is demonstrating that there's some kind of in-joke between them. Then there's the assertion of control by utilising that, and then what she says thereafter through the imposition of yet more word salad. Will Smith responds with 25 years and counting. Jada Pinkett Smith, mm, we ride together, we die together, bad marriage for life. And Will Smith joins in with the we die together, bad marriage for life. He has been indoctrinated to understand that the nature of a relationship is that by being together, and then you die together, that actually it's a bad marriage for life. And although they might seem to say it in a joking way, what's being demonstrated here is that he has been made to believe that an abusive marriage is the norm. He has been made to believe that the devaluing behaviour that he has received for probably the last two decades on and off is just part and parcel of what couples go through. He doesn't know any different. 
He doesn't know that, as I explained earlier, it's about dealing with the external stresses that can cause a problem towards your relationship, not the ones that are created internally by your partner being abusive. This shows just how heavy and deep his emotional thinking is, how much of a grip she holds over him, how brainwashed he is, and again, in saying this, he signals that he's under control. She responds with, it's the truth, and he says the same. And then again, she just dismissively states, it's just part of the journey, as if to say, being regularly abused, having your self-esteem taken from you, your self-confidence squashed, the fact that I can go and bang whoever I like and then rub your face in it, that I can go and shag the young, the young friend of our son, that I can tell you what to do, I can boss you around, I can put it all out there and humiliate you as I am doing now with this red table talk nonsense. It's just part of the journey. So Will might go, Jada, why are you hurting me so? Why are you cheating on me and making me feel miserable? It's just part of the journey, Will. Oh, right, okay, thanks. Uh, Jada, Jada, why do you keep triangulating me with people and making me feel so sad and hurt and worthless? It's just part of the journey, Will. Oh, right, thanks for explaining that. Jada, Jada, why is it that you call me bad names and sit there and don't talk to me? Why is it that you put all of this stuff out there on Instagram, which makes me look like a complete simp and a cuckold, so that the nation and the internet at large is taking the piss out of me? Oh, it's just part of the journey, Will. Oh, right, thanks very much. That's the point that Will Smith has got to. An individual who's worth millions, who's won awards, is a talented actor and musician. This is the level to which he has been brought and demonstrates to any of you listening that no matter what a person is, where they've got to in life, a narcissist can readily bring you under control and bring you low in the manner that this man has been brought. The good news for you is that by understanding the insight that I give you, that you can also then be equipped with the tools from the multiplicity of videos that I've created, my books, the material in the knowledge vault, and of course, in personal consultation, to do something about it. I told you the first year we were, were married. What would you tell me? That I can love you through anything. And I didn't believe you. Yeah. If somebody looked through a crystal ball and said, this, 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 and this is going to happen, I'd be like, mm -hmm. no way. Yeah. You thought I was that, that I didn't have the girth that it was going to take to ride with I you didn't, through. Yeah, I didn't know if you would be willing to find the deep capacity to love me. Yeah. How am I doing? You're doing great. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're awesome. And now to the final segment, ending at 12 minutes and 26. This opens with Will Smith stating, I told you the first year we were married that I can love you through anything. This is a classic example of his emotional thinking corrupting his love devotee trait that causes him to believe that he should put up with anything because love will find a way. This is classic belief of the empath and love should not have to find a way in such circumstances but he, driven by his emotional thinking, believes that that's appropriate and that basically love is pain, love is hurt, love is misery. He'll do his crying in the rain. Jada Pinkett Smith responds with, And I didn't believe you. The assertion of control through invalidation. If somebody looked through a crystal bowl and said this, this and this was going to happen, I'd have said, no way. Again, that's dismissiveness. Will Smith states, You thought I didn't have the girth to ride with you. I'm not sure that he intended to say that, as it um, does create something of an innuendo there. But leaving to that one side... What's happening there is that at the time that was said, she was belittling him to assert control. And of course, it's her grandiosity once again. You ride with me. Not together, you ride with me. J Jada Pinkett Smith states, I didn't know if you would be willing to find the deep capacity to love me. Oh, Jada, you're oh so special, aren't you? Hmm? The good old Will Smith, who's richer than you, more famous than you, more talented than you, but he's the one that might not have been willing to find the deep capacity to love you. Grandiosity, belittlement, delusion. Will Smith then asks, how am I doing? 
Remember, this is a red table talk with somebody that's cheated on him, and he's the one that's asking, how am I doing? The classic self-flagellation and need to please exhibited by an empathic victim such as Will Smith. Finally, and because he's exhibiting that he's under control, and this has enabled her to achieve her prime aim goals, although she doesn't realise this, because it's happening in the unconscious, he gets the doggy treats. You're doing great. You're awesome. Condescending. Who is she to be the one that assesses how he's performing in the relationship, whilst, of course, she exhibits no accountability for her own performance within the relationship? She manipulates him with a little dose of flattery. Yes, you're doing great, Will, because I do what I want, and you still hold on and cling on, and show me that you're under control, and that you fountain with fuel, and you allow me to access those character traits and residual benefits. So, yeah, you're doing great. That, of course, is happening in the unconscious. Smith gives her all of the things that her narcissism requires, and therefore, in that instant, because he's still under control in that instant, she, her narcissism allows her to give him a little drop of praise in a condescending, demeaning manner. Thus, that is the analysis. It's worth noting, of course, that this Red Table talk was really about addressing her infidelity, and it barely touched on it. It actually instead allowed her to pretend that she was addressing it to show that she's healed and that she's a better person. It also enabled her to just dismiss it as being something in the past. It more importantly enabled her to re repeatedly assert control over Will Smith by humiliating him in a piece of film which has then been seen by many around the globe. It shows his hurt, his pain, his desperation to please her, and the genuine warmth that emits from him, in stark contrast to the icy glacial demeanour that she exhibits. It also enables her a platform to continue to talk her self-indulgent, self-absorbed, utter shite about healing and so forth. Now, importantly, if you were watching this and didn't have the benefit of my commentary, what might you get from this? Well, some people would watch it and think, Jesus Christ, there's a man that can't stand up for himself, possibly. There'd be others that look at it and go, ah. Oh. They've been on a hell of a journey together, but look, they still have a laugh together and bump fists at the end and high five. They, you know, ride or die. This is what it's about. And this type of material is dangerous because what it does is it causes people to think that it is acceptable within a relationship, of course, that where you're being abused, that's just part of the way that the relationship goes and you should ride it out and stick with it as opposed to understanding that that's what we want from you because you're giving us control and fuel. So many people who don't have the benefit of your glorious narrator's commentary about all of this will either just think she comes across as a bit snooty, he's a bit of a weak man, or they actually seem to think, yeah, they've settled their differences and they're still together, isn't that great, notwithstanding all of the difficult things that have happened. And thus it cons people into thinking that's the way that you handle a relationship of that nature. For you, of course, you get an immense takeaway from this. You've benefited from detailed analysis of every interaction between these two individuals. Stripped, opened up, laid bare. A forensic examination going under the bonnet to demonstrate the interaction between a narcissist and an empath, showing you so many different facets of the narcissistic dynamic. With the input of all of that hard work at my end, it would be appreciated if you would demonstrate it by your own appreciation, by liking this video, getting it shared far and wide. This material is not getting the extent of the coverage that it ought to. It's giving people actual answers. And show super thanks in order to ensure that the, the Ultra, at the end of another busy week, has something to slake his furious thirst. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.